Welcome to St. Giles Anglican Church in Estevan. I'm Wilma Woods. I'm the Archdeacon and priest here at St. Giles. And you're welcome to our service of morning prayer. First of all, I would like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which we gather is on Treaty 4 territory, the original lands of the Cree, Ojibwe, Soto, Dakota, Nakota, Lakota, and the homeland of the Métis people. Let us worship. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is our refuge and strength. O come, let us worship. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. 
Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name for the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The Lord is our refuge and strength. O come, let us worship. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre, as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, my Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves. And after that, you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, where is your wife, Sarah? And he said, there in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season and your wife, Sarah, shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself saying, after I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have that pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time, I will return to you in due season and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, oh, yes, you did laugh. The Lord dealt with Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had promised. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to his son whom Sarah bore him. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Now Sarah said, God has brought laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh with me. And she said, who would have ever said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the cup of salvation. I will lift up the cup of salvation. I love you, O God, because you have heard the voice of my supplication, because you have inclined your ear to me. Whenever I called upon you, I will lift up a cup of salvation. How shall I repay you, O God, for the good things you have done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon your name, O God. I will lift up the cup of salvation. I will fulfill my vows to you, O God, in the presence of your people. Precious in your sight, O oh God, is the death of your servant. I will lift up the cup of salvation. I, O oh 
God, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon your name, O oh God. I will lift up the cup of salvation. I will fulfill my vows to you, O oh God, in the presence of all your people, in the courts of God's house, in the midst of Jerusalem. I will lift up the cup of salvation. A reading from the book of Romans, chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that sufferings produce endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and also with you. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. 
for it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child, and children will raise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next, for truly, I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So what is it that we hope for? Well, my guess is that it depends on who you ask. If you ask kids, it might be ice cream, puppy, pony, video game, being able to visit and play with their friends. Teens, to hang out with their friends, a summer job, pass their driver's exam, world peace. Adults, parents, that their children will be healthy and happy, that they will have a job, good health, a place to live and that we will soon have a vaccine for COVID-19. Context too matters. If you are black, indigenous, or a person of color, hope for an end to racism. LGBTQ, two-spirited persons, that they are seen as people and that their sexuality or gender alone does not define them. If you are in Burundi, Moinga, maybe the hope is that they will be safe and have enough for their families to eat. I think basic hopes are for food and shelter, safety, health, and to be loved. The world is a troubled and broken place, and yet I have hope. I have hope that the world will be changed. I pray as you do in the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is my prayer and my hope is in the Lord. How is it that we Christians can have hope when things seem so heavy and so messed up right now? We have so many things going on. I've heard it more than once. Can we just start 2020 over again? I have so many hopes. I have hopes for my life, my family, the church, the world, so many. What is it that you hope for? I'm gonna give you a couple seconds here. The next question is, do we believe that these hopes will be realized? Is it wishful thinking or is it genuine hope? Paul in Romans 5 says, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. Justified by faith, through Christ, dying for us, this gift was given to us. Justified by faith, a doctrine which means that we have been declared not guilty, sins forgiven, once and for all. And that, my friends, is the gift of grace. Through Christ, we have been given access to the gift of grace. Through Christ dying for us, we are justified. A person can only be put right with God by God himself. God justifies or declares not guilty those who trust in Christ and will never demand that we pay the price for our sins, which is death. Paul says, for while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Christ was not discriminating when he chose those disciples that we heard about in the gospel. Until now, they've been disciples, and now for the first time, they are named as apostles and given authority and powers to cast out spirits and to cure disease and sickness. These were not a group of guys with sterling characters, and yet Jesus chose them. Christ died not for the righteous, the sinless, the believers, the good people, but died for all of us. And I find this to be very good news indeed. Not only through Christ are we justified and have access to grace, but we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God, being in the near presence of God, eternal life. Paul says that we don't boast about just that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, 
and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Now, I need to tell you that I didn't always love these verses because I think it's because of the word boast. Boasting in our suffering made me feel like suffering was supposed to be a good thing, something that we're proud of. Suffering is a human thing. It happens in life. But it is not caused by God or commended as a good thing. But it is a thing. Can't ignore it, can't avoid it, and it happens. So this is where I turn to Eugene Peterson's The Message. He says, we continue to shout our praise even when we're hemmed in with troubles because we know how troubles can develop passionate patience in us and how that patience in turn forges the tempered steel of virtue, keeping us alert for whatever God will do next. Praise definitely works better for me than boast. We continue to praise God, we continue to hope, even through the worst of times, because we have faith. Hope coming from faith is not just a wish list. Now, hoping that Brian will buy me a pony for our anniversary is a wish list. Real hope is knowing that I will share the glory of God someday, have eternal life, because we are justified, saved by grace and by faith. Because of grace, because of Jesus Christ, we continue to praise God and have faith, even though we are in the midst of a pandemic, even though things are difficult and times are tough, because in this we grow and our faith strengthens because we have been given the gift of the Holy Spirit, which continually pours into us and our lives. This is how our faith, as it says in Hebrews 11, is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. How that faith is strengthened. Because we are saved by faith, we have hope in the Lord. We have hope in the midst of all things awful to come out on the other side stronger in faith and hopeful of eternal life. Hope says that the future could happen. Faith says it will happen. Praise the Lord and thanks be to God. Amen. As we hope in the Lord, we will gain our strength. We will run for miles. We will stand up straight. We will not grow weary. We will not grow faint. 
let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. During this time of pandemic, when we cannot physically put our offerings on the plate, we ask that offerings continue to be given by mail, e-transfer, or pre-authorized deposits through your bank. Further information on how to do that is on our website. For the gifts and offerings we receive, we give thanks and we pray. God of reconciliation and forgiveness, the saving work of Christ has made our peace with you. May that work grow towards its perfection in all we offer you this day. We ask this in his name. Amen. Our intercessions. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for all those who are alone. For this community, our country, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For those who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Rob, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in his church, for our own needs and those of others. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O Lord, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all those who have died in the peace of Christ and for those whose faith is known to you alone, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gracious God, you have heard the prayers of your faithful people. You know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Grant our requests as may be best for us. This we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, without you, we are not able to please you. Mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And now gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favor and grant us peace. And the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May his graciousness be like an endless stream. And may the Lord show his favor to your house and your neighbor till the last remaining strains of striving cease. May he grant you In my heart there's a sadness building up Every turn adds to the cup As the losses match the measure of my gains And in the shadow of this curse Where the best implies the worst If you're like me Somebody pray May the Lord bless and keep you May His face shine upon you May His graciousness be like an endless stream May the Lord show His favor To your house and your name Till the last remaining strains of striving cease, may He grant you.